Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video today on the channel. We have Paul Saladino, as well as Derek from More Plates, More Dates. It's a little short video entitled, Why Paul Saladino Stopped the Carnivore Diet After Two Years. We all know why he stopped the carnivore diet. It is because, most likely, he either panicked because of, well, a sort of hypochondriac episode when he started to experience problems that I believe he genuinely experienced, or it was an attempt to justify his carb addiction that was still laying dormant within him, which many people have, including me, by the way. I have a carb addiction. I just don't justify the addiction via pseudo-sophistication, which is what many health influencers do, but Paul is the king of doing such a thing. I hate calling him a king of anything, but hell, if the boot fits. Anyway, I'm just gonna jump right into this. Before we get started, of course, though, just like always, please subscribe to the Patreon if you haven't already to gain access to one week early uploads, ad-free content, uncensored content, and one extra video per week, as well as buying my book, please, Conjure Indicated, if you haven't already. And with that being said, now let's jump directly into this awesome, awesome video, I suspect. You don't even really call yourself a carnivore anymore. Like, you changed your Instagram name and everything. Do you want to Well, yeah, that's funny. He changed his Instagram name far later than it should have actually been changed. What he did is he capitalized upon the name Carnivore MD until he garnered enough of a following to the point where he said to himself, well, it doesn't matter if I change my name now. Everyone knows me as that, and I gained enough of a following to subsist off of the money that they, well, allow me to rake in. Okay, it was long overdue. Long overdue. That's the funny part. Can I speak to that briefly? Yeah, yeah. So the, the backstory here is that I guess in 2018, I cut out all the plants from my diet and basically ate meat, organs, and fat for... Okay, well, um, organs shouldn't have been consumed to any significant degree at all. That's another problem. Particularly liver because of its copper content. A lot of people think it's because of the vitamin A content. I don't know about getting vitamin A toxicity from liver, but copper, if present in excess within the body, at least in terms of the ratio of copper to other electrolytes, can perturb the electrolyte balance of the body, it seems. So that's a problem. You shouldn't have been consuming organs to any significant degree at all, Paul. Two years? Mm -hmm. During that time, I wrote The Carnivore Code, got interested in this carnivore diet, got interested- Yeah, I read half of The Carnivore Code, and sorry, I'm not just saying this just to be a d I really wasn't impressed. It was a very superficial argument piece or supporting piece for The Carnivore Diet. It really only focused on plant toxins, only. It didn't focus really on carbohydrates whatsoever, at least from the amount that I read, at all. And the potential for some plant foods to trigger autoimmunity in some people, which is kind of my, that's my framework because I had pretty bad eczema. For a long time yes yes the whole plant toxins it's it's a real thing okay plants are designed to be biochemical geniuses and to engage in chemical warfare with other predators anything that interferes with the survival of a plant is a plant predator there is a quantum size difference between us and insects which are what plant toxins are primarily designed to target but we are still plant predators so they do still affect us and there are phenomena such as accrual so things can catch up to you as well even if they don't immediately harm you or kill you upon consumption doesn't mean that they aren't toxic and doesn't mean that they should be consumed their consumption should be perpetuated to any significant degree at all life and i had bad eczematous reactions throughout medical school college even uh, residency that spurred me to think about this idea like are all plants good for all people mm -hmm. no they're not they're not indicated at least and um that was the beginning of these ideas around the carnivore diet now the end of that story or the next chapter of the story was about two years into the carnivore diet i started noticing persistence of unpleasant symptoms. So testosterone dropped to around 500. Okay, so I don't care what the level was. What we care about is your presentation. You didn't present with low testosterone symptoms. Not once did you. And you still don't, actually. You present with other things. Doesn't seem to be low testosterone though, Paul. Sean Baker, for example, has on multiple occasions presented with very low testosterone levels, both free and total. I believe total was somewhere in the hundreds, not even peaking 200. That man is not bereft of testosterone. There you go. Presentation matters. If your blood test showed low testosterone and you actually had low testosterone, we would have seen it, okay? There are symptoms. Total sleep disturbances, palpitations, muscle- okay, So electrolyte imbalances, so that could be caused by a few things. It seems to be copper as one of them. More so, probably, it was insufficient protein consumption for your needs. At least insufficient protein consumption in one bolus. Even if you were getting enough protein overall for your physiological needs in a day, that does not necessarily mean that you were getting enough in one bolus to stimulate a sufficient insulin response to maintain electrolytes at the level of the kidney, among other things like maintaining muscle mass because insulin is required for muscle protein synthesis and glucose administration for glycogen resynthesis in muscle cells, as well as liver cells, actually. Okay, so anyway. But also, if you did actually have low testosterone, that would also explain why you'd have low testosterone. Low hormones in general, thyroid, all that. But anyway. I am, so when I was surfing or climbing, 
and I started to think, okay. Yeah, so I should probably correct myself, honestly, now that I'm reflecting. Testosterone levels being low can cause palpitation. So he probably did have symptoms of low testosterone. But anyway, it all ties back to the main problem at hand here, and we'll get to it. And I started to think, okay, maybe long-term ketosis is not great for me. And okay, so there it is. Paul, long-term ketosis is not indicated for anybody. No one said to be in long-term ketosis. Some people are saying that in the keto space, and they all develop problems. All of them, it seems, at some point. Five days, maybe seven days max to be in extended ketosis. You will start to have issues because ketosis is a catabolic situation. A catabolic state is the state in which we have existed in as a species, even including protohumans that preceded a current speciation for four and a half million years, for the majority of the time. We are not designed to be in a chronically catabolic state, however, because catabolism means the breaking down of a complex molecule for use into smaller ones for use. Eventually, catabolism starts to turn into degradation and erosion. Your body starts to enter a starvation episode. The myth is that ketosis itself is a starvation mechanism. No, it's not. Not at all. Once again, we've existed in that state for millions of years, for the most part. However, the other myth that's sort of in this keto space, this, this subgroup of this keto community, is that chronic ketosis, continuous long-term ketosis, is indicated. And this is what sparks this protein phobia. No. So there you go, Paul. You just admitted it. Long-term ketosis. There was your problem. I mean, at least that's a speculation. Was he actually in long-term ketosis? Perhaps not. Was he measuring this? I was definitely in ketosis at the time. Monot How do you know that? So do you know that? Because if you were, then there you go. Slam dunk. There was your diagnosis. Monitoring uh, blood ketones with a meter. There we go. There is the diagnosis right there. There's the admission. There it is. Paul, you were in ketosis for too long because of an insufficient insulin response. And we'll get to that in a minute. I suspect when he preys upon people's ignorance and beguiles people into his ideology because he's feigning some sort of magnanimity and, and feigning this sense of humility. It's all fabricated. The most dangerous people are the ones that espouse lies when they know they're lying and pretend to be good people when they do it. Okay? Arguably, people that are more dangerous than that are people that actually believe what they're saying. And I'm sort of starting to believe that Paul has bought into his own lies. Ketosis, but definitely ketosis. And so at that point, I started to dig into the research a little bit more and understood that insulin signaling is critical at the level of the kidney. Correct. Yes, you will develop leaky kidney syndrome where the kidneys cannot maintain electrolyte balance no matter how much electrolyte administration is occurring. Correct, Paul. You know what stimulates insulin, Paul? Well, we'll get to it. Uh, to hold on to minerals, to hold on to potassium, calcium, sodium, chloride, magnesium, and that in long-term ketosis in most humans, you're going to become so electrolyte depleted that it's- Not really most humans, all of them actually at some point. Impossible to resolve that with enormous amounts of electrolytes, right? You can it is impossible because that's not the root problem. It's not the amount of electrolyte consumption. It's the maintenance of the electrolytes being administered into the physiological system at large all of the electrolytes you want. You can do so much salt. Your, your body's really not gonna be able to hold on to those without some sort of an insulin signal at the level of the kidney. I've experienced- Correct, Paul. Absolutely, 100%, unequivocally, unambiguously correct. Now tell us how to stimulate insulin. Why don't you, Paul? There's tons of people experience this with long-term ketosis. So at that point, I had to really kind of look at what I was doing and make this sort of learning judgment that long-term ketosis was not a great thing for me and probably not a it's not a great thing for anyone paul so okay cover that thing for most humans and at that point i added honey and then fruit to my and there's why did you do that paul why the hell did you do that <sighs> do you see this just it's just stark jump that he makes he just casually just perfunctorily mentions it nonchalantly paul carbohydrates stimulate an insulin spike correct precisely because it causes a glucose spike, something that is entirely contraindicated and insalubrious for humans to experience. So it does stimulate insulin, okay? The other nutrient, macronutrient, that stimulates insulin is, oh yeah, protein, amino acids, for two reasons. Insulin is required for muscle protein synthesis, sure, but it's primarily because amino acids are used, if in a surplus, let's say, to be converted into glucose via gluconeogenesis. It has to do with keto acids and new amino acids created, this little trade-off that happens in the body, okay? It enters through the Krebs cycle, oxaloacetate is produced, you get the gist, maybe, okay? That is what is used to create glucose in a ketogenic state. Fat isn't, okay? Fat doesn't really touch your insulin at all. Effectively, there's no response. You'd have to eat a ton of fat. You weren't eating sufficient protein, Paul. You just admitted it at this point. You were tracking ketones and you were not in a super deep state of ketosis the whole time, but you were in ketosis. Well, there's your problem. That's probably why you didn't develop the problems as quickly as other people that are in deep ketosis, because you were just riding the line. Really?
and it's been an evolution since then for probably the last three years. So now I've been eating fruit, honey as my main sources of carbohydrates, maple syrup. Oh, uh, what about the white rice that you've now implemented and the potatoes I've heard? Raw milk, the lactose and raw milk for going on three years now and feeling much better. Yeah, and that's a problem. Well, you feel much better. I, you know what? I, I believe you. I'll even go as far to say that I believe you because your body is functioning with normal, well... <laughs> I say normal insulin responses. They're not normal at all, but you're getting sufficient insulin responses. Let's just say that. Sure. What you're also doing is you're engaging in a Randall cycle upregulation in terms of the bodily status of the Randall cycle regulation in your body or activation in your body. And you've exemplified on multiple occasions, a myriad of occasions, how destitute your understanding of the Randall cycle actually is. Okay, I understand the Randall cycle. You don't. Testosterone is 800, you know, free testosterone. Fantastic. I already covered the levels thing. But let's just say for the sake of the argument that, yeah, that actually represents your normal testosterone production and utilization in the body. Great. That's probably as a result of adequate insulin. Great. Goes right back to my point. What stimulates insulin, Paul? Great. Sex hormone binding globulin goes down. We'll talk about this. Uh, free T3 goes back up. Thyroid hormones improve. Cholesterol, lipids go down. Still... LDLC or my LDLP is above what many people would consider to be optimal. And we can talk about why I don't think that's an issue. Okay. Certainly there are changes that happen in humans without carbohydrates in their diet at the level of... Yeah, things do happen. Yep. Things happen when uh, human beings quit carbohydrates as compared to whenever they're consuming them. Yep. What do you mean by that? Things happen. Lots of things happen. At the level of hormones, at the level of electric... Sure. It's at the level of lipids. Okay, well, let me stop being pedantic and get to exactly what his implications are. Are you saying that there is a level, there is a threshold at which lipid concentrations within the body are deleterious? No evidence for that, is there? With respect to a normal functioning physiological system, we're not talking about diseases where certain enzymes are knocked out of the beta oxidation pathway or something. We're not talking about that stuff. We're not talking about familial hypercholesterolemia either. We're talking about normal functioning human beings. Okay, there's no evidence for that. So once again, with your tacit implication that really what it is actually is it's a desperate attempt to keep raking in these arguments that you can use to bolster your ideology, which is extremely, extremely lacking. It's so easily undermined, okay? Like a Jenga tower. And so you have to keep coming up with these ways of using pseudo-sophistication in order to aggrandize it and to bolster it in the perception of ignorant followers. One of which is pretending like there is a lipid level that has been established to be deleterious in a normal physiological system and actually has been established to occur in normal physiological systems, and to pretend that there's any evidence to suggest that that level is obtained by carbohydrate abstention. There's no evidence of that at all. But again, it's just it's just a desperate attempt to bolster your argument and aggrandize it, okay? The other thing that you just mentioned, what was it? Carbohydrates in their diet at the level of hormones, at the level of electrolytes. Okay, yeah, yeah. So no, not necessarily in terms of your implications that something deleterious will occur. They're non-optimal, they're suboptimal in terms of the levels and, and in terms of the function of the human body with respect to an absence of carbohydrates. What you're really trying to say is an absence of an insulin response. And that's what you've done. You've tactically conflated the two and combined them together. When you don't have carbohydrates, you won't have a sufficient insulin response. So when he talks about an insufficient insulin response and he says that the symptoms of insufficient insulin is all these things, he's correct. But he has strategically and tactically equated that to an absence of carbohydrates and that that necessarily will occur when abstaining from carbohydrates, which isn't true. You just told us that you were in a constant state of ketosis, low grade, whatever, constant state of ketosis, it's still ketosis. That's not indicated. What is indicated is to have one bolus of protein for your physiological needs, two max if you can't get all that food down, I get it, I understand, to stimulate a sufficient insulin response. You see, Paul, you know that protein stimulates insulin. You know it stimulates insulin, okay? You don't talk about it until someone brings it up, you know, rarely, and then you say, well, I don't think it's sufficient. Well, what makes you think that? Why do you think it's not sufficient? Oh, because research told you that? Oh, and then your next move is to put up a bunch of papers on the screen for two seconds of the abstracts, and of three, perhaps, because when you really look at the studies, Paul, sites. They're all poor sample sizes, extremely small. One of them was on male sheep. So I came across this paper with honey and it fascinated me. Honey, natural honey lowers seven male sheep or something. He cited that whenever he was defending his decision to implement honey into his diet. He said that it's indicated. He says it's actually healthy. Ridiculous. This is shameful. And you are lulling and beguiling people into your dangerous ideology. And you, I've heard from other people, including a very famous person, maybe not really in this space, but in the fitness sphere, that has clients that he receives that have gone to you and they have complained to him that you made them, your advice at least, and the implementation of your advice made them far worse, far worse, dangerously worse. Oh, but you sit there and you get paid. See, what you've done is you've built your business model upon spouting lies. And so the chances of you actually stepping down, slim to none level of lipids and 
these are interesting to me. So I'm actually, when people- You're also a liar with respect to Liver King, your, your affiliation and association with Liver King. You're either a liar or an absolute idiot for saying that you were unaware that Liver King was taking steroids. Sometimes meet me or they talk to me now, they say, hey, I wanna go on a carnivore diet. And I say, you mean an animal-based diet, right? And that's just a- No, ridiculous, Paul. By the way, first of all, it's ridiculous because a carnivore diet is indicated and animal-based is not, okay? His idea of what is an indicated diet. The other reason why that's bullshit is because, Paul, your diet is not animal-based. It's not animal-based. It's fruit-based. This is what to eat for breakfast on an animal-based diet. Orange juice, you can have some fruit, bananas, apples, whatever's in season, blueberries. I also like to have raw milk with honey or kefir with honey. <laughs> these meals contain 1600 calories. This cost me $23. This cost me $15.50. Of these breakfasts contain about 750 calories. This is a double chocolate chip frappuccino from Starbucks and a blueberry muffin. While this breakfast of strawberries, raspberries, whipped cream, raw milk, three hard boiled eggs, and a tablespoon of honey contains zero grams of processed sugar. It's sugar based that I think the term came the first time I was on a podcast with Joe Rogan, mm -hmm. coined that term and we, we ran with it. It's, Fantastic. I think of animal-based as just a, a framework, like, okay, most of your diet is animal foods, at least in terms of calories. And if it could get any worse, calories, goodness me. Binge my channel to find out my opinions on calories. Not even my opinions, just find out the facts on calories. But also, once again, it's not the majority of the diet. We already covered that, didn't we? Most of my diet is now, it's organs, it's grass-fed meat. It's the organs is a mistake. However, now that you're implementing carbohydrates into your diet in a very significant amount. And I eat 280 to 320 grams of carbohydrates a day. You probably need all those nutrients because it seems to be the case, the more carbohydrates you consume, the more nutrients you need to serve the life of a human being. Vitamin C is a perfect example. It's tallow, it's raw milk. And then I get a significant amount of calories from carbohydrates. No, you don't get any calories from anything, Paul in the form of fruit, fruit juice, honey, etc. So yeah, that's a problem. Fruit juice. Now you've started with the fruit juice thing. F me, Paul. Uh, I really, really don't wish it upon you as much as it may seem like I'm a sadist on this channel in many ways, maybe, perhaps. But by my estimation, you are going to be well on your way soon if you catch my drift. Downhill, health-wise. <sighs> anyway. Yeah, so that's an animal-based diet. And I think that works a lot better for most people. Now, well, I don't care what you think. You think a lot of things that are absolutely inane and incorrect. To be fair, and what's interesting about this is a lot of people would look at that diet and say it's still very restrictive, quote unquote, and we can talk about- No, it's not. Are you kidding me? Whoever would say that is an absolute food addict and an imbecile. Because what am I excluding in an animal-based diet? I'm not eating grains. So white rice is kind of a gray area, but I don't eat white rice. I don't oh eat yeah, of course it's a gray area. Goodness. I don't eat wheat. I don't eat beans. I don't eat seeds. I don't eat nuts. I don't eat leaves. And a lot of those foods are considered to be healthy by the mainstream. And so that is a similarity from carnivore. Yeah, ridiculous that I've carried over, but I have started including carbohydrates in the form of the fruit and the honey. And the reason I do- well, that's a problem, isn't it? Covered that. Intentionality there is if you look at a plant and a plant's life cycle, the intention of the plant is to move its seeds to the next generation in a colorful, sweet fruit. And if you- Yes. At plant foods and you look at overarching terms like defense chemicals, the lowest amount of defense chemicals are in the fruit. That's pretty- The lowest amount. There's not an absence of them. Pineapple, for example. Okay. Clear and the lowest amounts of those defense chemicals actually occur as the fruit ripens. So you can see- Yes. Okay, there's also another myth embedded into this, which is this myth that he's implying, which is that the plant makes fruit, and since it wants the seeds in the fruit to be spread, which is why it wants it to be eaten, it wants it to be eaten by anything. False. Actually, fruit tends to evolve around the animals that are around that fruit. So it tailors that fruit to be the least toxic, or at least the most it can get to non-toxic, to the animals that it evolves around, so that those animals can transport the seeds. It doesn't want any animal to eat it, it seems. Which is why, Paul, there are still toxins in ripe fruit. Sorts of defense chemicals, we can talk about interesting examples if you want, or we can go deeper in the lipids, but things like non-protein amino acids, these are lower and other plant defense chemicals, they're lower as the fruit ripens. So there's these lower, not absent. Signals within the plant kingdom that say, hey, this food is less toxic once I'm ready for that. Less toxic. Need to go germinate. And that's when I want you to eat it. So that's where I- Not you per se, and not us. The animal in which it wants to eat it, which varies. Now with the animal-based diet. Okay. Versus carnivore. Right, so it's not an animal-based diet. It's not a f***ing animal-based diet, Paul. And you know it's not an animal-based diet. It's ridiculous. I've probably already put clips up on the screen. I know exactly what I'm going to do editing-wise. 
Anyway, with that being said, Paul is a liar, in my opinion. Especially the Liver King thing. He is a liar for that. It's so obvious that he's a liar. It's either he's a liar or an imbecile, and both mean that you shouldn't be listening to him. It really, really is that simple. But anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, please subscribe to the channel, please leave your thoughts in the comment section below, and also, once again, subscribe to the Patreon if you haven't already, to gain access to all the things I said in the beginning that you will gain access to, and also by my book Contraindicated, a closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness, disorder, or disease for over a century if you haven't bought that book already either. And, most importantly, the link on the bottom of the screen. What is that? That is a link that will bring you to an amazing site with amazing products from an amazing brand known as Cerule. If you purchase product through that link, you will get a permanent 10% discount and a permanent free shipping discount on your orders when you sign up for monthly deliveries. If you'd like to learn more about those products, which I recommend everyone do before buying anything, please refer to the link in the top right corner of the screen, the Cerule Products link, which is a complete elucidation and complete explanation of those products, what they are, who should take them, why you should take them, when to take them, etc, etc. And I would also further migrate to the description below to find a video done between myself and Professor Bart K on these products in further detail, as well as the business of Cerule itself. Also, if you would like to to send one-time donations instead of recurring payments through Patreon and Cerule, I would recommend migrating to the description below as well to find a PayPal donation link and a GoFundMe donation link to leave those donations. I now have options available for that. And also, finally, email me at edgoki14 gmail.com if you have any other questions, such as, for example, oh, I don't know, how to obtain those Cerule products for free, because who in their right mind wouldn't want that? So, with that being said, join me next time when we react to someone else that is not as misanthropic as Paul, because, well, that is a feat that is very difficult to achieve, I believe, by my estimation. So, till then.